Gracias, uh, Mario. Eh, hola a todos. Uh, me llamo Chris. Eh, estoy representando. I can't remember the word. I'm a representative for Feedback Fruits. And uh, I will start by saying if I do speak too quickly, please just ask me to slow down because I know sometimes I can speak too quickly. So thank you all for coming. Today, I would like to talk a bit about Feedback Fruits, you know, why we're here, why do you come, and to talk about the tools that we make. And so, if I may, first things first, I'm going to make sure I share the right screen, and it is in, it was all going so well, share screen here. So, here is my presentation for, uh, for you guys. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat or raise your hand, get my attention. So Feedback Fruits, our goal is to make every course engaging. Our, lead, our CEO set up 10 years ago because the interaction between classes, between the teachers and the students wasn't very beneficial. The feedback was always at the end of a course and it was a case of, there you go, here's what you can do next time. But what about inserting feedback through the course? What about feedback from peers? None of this was taken into consideration. Now we have a fully fledged course with the idea to make every course engaging with better feedback. And today we're talking about giving group feedback. So today we're going to cover what is Feedback Fruits, the introduction to the tools, and I would like to show you how to set up the tools in D2L so that you can leave here knowing how to set up a group member evaluation. And then if you've got questions or need support at the end, that's where we can go through the questions. So first things first, make every course engaging as our mission with the pedagogy led technology second. So what we've done is we try to find, we find a problem and then we try to solve that problem. Instead of making a technology and seeing how teaching can fit that, we have teachers come to us and say, we need this, and then we try to solve it. We've done this with feedback. We've done this with interactive documents, and we've done that with some other tools such as discussions. But today we're focusing on one very specific part, and it's going to be on the left-hand side in our feedback tools, the group member evaluation. So what is group member evaluation and where did it come from? The pedagogical challenge that we found was that teachers didn't know within groups how strengths were. They found that they give, you know, your task to work with five other people, make a presentation, you know, you'll typically give the same grade to all of them. So teachers couldn't differentiate between who was doing what. Students were also getting frustrated because when you're in a group of five, there's always that one person in the group who doesn't do anything. Maybe that was you when you were studying, I don't know. But how do you try to counteract that by giving the students a reason to perform? So what the group member evaluation does, the teacher wants to see how you rate each other on certain topics that the teacher decides such as teamwork or level of detail. And so this improves teamwork by letting students evaluate their team members' collaboration skills and contributions to group work. So how do teachers use it? Teachers use it for evaluating and monitoring group work and by letting students evaluate other skills that peers demonstrate live during class, such as when they've done presentation in the front or role plays, etc. The reasons for this, yeah, it facilitates peer learning. Uh, one thing which teachers are, are starting to see more and more is the unlocked potential of learning from each other. Feedback can be given from another person. You know, if, if Alex is good at talking, but Ben's good at detail, but Charles is good at, re at resource management or something, they can each give each other skills and it doesn't have to just be teacher-led. Using students as a resource saves a lot of time for teachers and it helps them learn from each other, which is a good thing. It enhances the feedback giving skills, which is one of the vital life, life skills of the 21st century, giving good feedback to each other. Teacher also gets insight into the group work process 
And I'm going to give you an example of, an, of a live activity that we've got in our environment. And it promotes accountability and prevents free riding because free riding is something which does plague a lot of a lot of people. Free riding means when students will just not do work, but they will still get grades because they're in a group which does do the work. And we want to try to eliminate that. And so at this point, I'm going to not them not creating new activity. First things first, I would like to show you what it looks like from a teacher's point of view. So if you're in there, you've made a group member evaluation task. What can you expect to see? And I'm just going to you. I can see all of you. I can see that. I need to get rid of the zoom bar a second. So that comes down. Uh, close that one down too. So I've got my activity here. And it's the group member evaluation. Students give feedback on their peers' collaboration skills. I previously set this up. We've got our instructions. What do they need to do? I can see the reviews that they've given each other. I can see on the converse side, the reviews that they've received from each other. And then at the bottom, I've got some group contribution grading. And this is to do with changing the score based upon certain factors. Let me show you exactly what you can find out. So first things first, let's start from the top. At the top of this activity, we can see the level of interaction. One of the nice things about the group member evaluation is that you can see at the top the overview, cut that um, down by groups, by individuals. You can see the overall grade they've received. You can see which parts of the task they've completed. You can see how much feedback they've given and how many comments and whether or not they've read the feedback. So all of these are vital steps to completion. And if you've got someone like, let's say here, George Anderson, he's not finished a self-assessment, he's not done the feedback, he's not written comments, he's not read his feedback. Now, that might be a sign for me to say to George, hey, George, is there, is there an issue with how you're not, uh, that you've not completed the homework? And then similarly, you might say, oh, John Williams, if he'd done more, you're going to say, thanks, John, what did you find out by doing your 13 comments? So this is a helpful tool to help guide your conversations with students. And then down here, you can see that by group three and group one as well. And this will pick up those who have done high, have done low. Now, that's the overview. And you can also see the average of groups of comments per group and how much time each user has spent. If this is like two minutes, then you know the class hasn't spent enough time on it and you can have some serious conversations with them. So it gives you a really good chance to see what people have done. Now, if I want to pick up on what the students have said about each other, you can go down to here and you can see what people have said. Let's go to group. What did John Williams say about others? He has given this much on average to the others. He's rated himself at 58%. So that's pretty in line with what you might expect. If we go down to group three and group one, all fairly in line. But this can also be very helpful because when we're getting, getting talking about insights, if James Smith, he's rated on average, reviewer average rating 50%, but he's rated himself at 67%, maybe he's giving himself a bit too much of a high score. Maybe that's realistic, but. What about if someone has written, given everyone else 20% and given themselves 80%, then that would be some good topics for conversation. And just to clarify, the, the students don't see all this. The students see something slightly different and you'll see, um, but they, do, they, they you, but you can see this, you can see the difference between those. Now the received reviews is a bit more interesting because if I go down to group two, same sort of thing turns up. But if I click on the view all, I can see what people have given each other on average with a heat map. So me as a teacher, I said the things that I think are important is on the left with the focus on task and participation, shared responsibility, discussion, listening. These are important to me. And I can see the deeper the blue, the more people have voted for each other on this one. So in the top line, we know that the most people have voted here because it's the darkest. So we're talking, this is uh, two points, meets expectations. If I go down here, you can see it's all, these are all pretty decent. Now, if there were a very dark blue down here on the left-hand side with zero points, it would be an indication to me that that's something that the class feels the others in the room aren't so comfortable at. So that's something which I could then in the next lesson talk about discussing and listening, how do I work on skills? So 
it's a very useful guide for the teacher as well to find out where those weaknesses are. I'm going to go back again here. And then at the end, the group contribution grading. If you've got, you can see individuals, how much they've got, and the computer will work out based upon what you've been put, how many points they should each get. However, if someone's been graded down really low because they've said, you know, George Anderson, good contribution factor, the people in his group gave him a lower score. So the computer has said, all right, give him nine points less. That ends up with minus nine. So that ends up with 71 as an example. More on this later on. I think this is a bit of detail, which maybe I don't need to go into right now. And it's all contributed by you. The teacher still has control of this. So if you spoke to John Williams and you realize, actually, he knows everything, give him 20%, then off it goes. You can publish the grades and they can be associated. They will go through to Brightspace so it can be configured in Brightspace with its grading. So. To sum up the teacher's view, you get an insight into what they've done. It gives you insights into how they're viewing each other. You can see their self-assessment versus how they've given others to see if they're overconfident or underconfident. So that's all very well and good for you. What about a student? What would a student see? And whilst I go to the other screen, I'm just going to pause and ask if there are any questions yet or anything which needs clarification. And yeah, Luis. Hi, <clears throat> hi, Chris. How are you? I'm very well. Gracias. You too. Oh, muy bien. Gracias. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Chris, so I work at the business school here, and um, we have been working for quite a while with another tool, and uh, we are engaged in an assurance of learning um, process for quite a few years. Um. And actually, one of the learning uh, objectives we have is related with teamwork. So I was wondering yeah. because I think I see it's, it's very nice how how um, your tool connects or interacts um, easily with um, Brightspace. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if if it's possible to. I can see that the criteria are are already defined within your, let's say your, your tool, um, is it possible to add or to change uh, the existing criteria given that we already have like a, like a record so we don't lose the tracking you know, of, of all the time series and everything we're trying to measure throughout these years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure thing. Let me show you how you can edit, uh, how you can change this. I'm gonna click on the edit mode. If you go down to instructions is just instructions given reviews and this is where you change the feedback criteria and that currently is set to a rubric with these four session sections if i click on edit section this is the rubric which you can customize delete change yourself it can be as wide as it needs so between zero and three zero and four five six and you can have as many uh as many rows as you like as well so if this doesn't work for you just change it is that what does that answer your question Yes, yes. So actually, those are the criteria that are the, by default set by the system, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you can copy them. You can copy them to your own and then change them. But yeah, they're the, these are the default ones. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, any, other, any other questions? Well, Louise, thank you for your question. Let, now I'm going to just share my screen to show you what it looks like if you're a student in this system. And uh, that's over here, right. So all about student experience as well, because uh, we try to make it user friendly. First things first, you'll see it's very similar to the teacher view. It's all very standardized and all of the tools are like this. Uh, so here I am. My name is, I, I think, yeah, I'm Jennifer Garcia, instructions, give feedback, to yourself and group members. So what a student would do is click on continue or start reviewing, and it brings them to this screen here. Self-assessment. I needed to give myself points first. So I think I gave myself two points, two points, two points, and zero points, not done yet. I'm gonna give myself um, teamwork, zero, and write feedback. I say, uh, I really didn't collaborate well with my 
study colleagues. Yeah, a bit of honest self-reflection. Uh, I might say a suggestion. Um, try to be more friendly next time. For example, that is a suggestion. I'm gonna post it to myself. My teacher will see my feedback and that's something I've done some self-reflection. Then I'll do the same about Olivia Johnson and so on. And then once I've done all of these, oh, I can do one about Natty Davis as well. I would say she gets this. I still need to write the feedback, but I can also give a compliment saying you, uh, you know, took on tasks that you needed to. And I might give some useful information as well. So the automated feedback coach is something which recognizes, is it good, is it bad? Try to avoid writing your feedback as a statement. Your experience is your perception. Framing it as that is more constructive for you to So maybe I need to give something which is actually constructive. That's a nice compliment there. For the point of now, it doesn't matter. So I've written my comments. Once I've written all of my comments, you know, I'm gonna finish later. You can then go down to see what people have re wrote, written about you. So I'm going to read received feedback, review overview. So here is my self-assessment I already knew, but then I can see all received reviews, all reviews received by Jennifer Garcia, that's me. Uh, I can see what the comments are. This is what people said about me. I, the, if it's got a big bauble, that's where the majority of points went. Fairly standard, fairly logical, fairly straightforward. So once you've read all those, and you can specifically see who has said what. And one thing which is possible as well, from the teacher's point of view, is you can anonymize it. That means that instead of saying your reviewer was Robert Jones, it would say your reviewer was, uh, and it's always a fruit styled name. So reviewer, uh, funky apple or sweet cherry or um, speedy pineapple, for example. And the reason that can be very helpful is when students are particularly first years or people who don't know each other very well, and they might be a little bit shy about saying something, you know, if I, if I thought that Robert Jones didn't do this very well, well, if he sees that it's about, if he sees it's from me, maybe I might not be completely honest. I might not be so you know, rude as other people might perceive it. So having anonymity on means that he can't see who wrote it and therefore it opens them up a little bit. I would say certainly at the start of, you know, when you throw this out for the first time, maybe you'll think of anonymity unless the group is very comfortable with each other. So once you've read all of your feedback, you can go back again. Group contribute, you can see, you can see where your grades come from, group project grade 80%, received ratings for this, and the teacher's grade adjustments. Your individual's project grade is 75%, and boom, I'm done. So it's tried to be as seamless as possible, and it should be fairly straightforward for a student to use and for a teacher to administer. Is there any question on the student view of this? Because if not, uh, one thing that you might be asking at this point, I'm gonna undo that. Um, one thing you might be asking now is, that's all very good, I would like to use it, but how? I'm going to go into your area. I've got an account in Universidad del Norte, and this is my course, I'm in Curso Feedback Fruits, and I'm going to go to Espacio de Aprendizaje. My accent, I do not remember if I'm speaking Spanish Spanish or like uh, South American Spanish or how the Z sounds. It's been 15 years since I learned this Spanish. So apologies for mangling it. I'm now in my area. I'm in unit one, so this is my class. And I want to create a new activity. And I'm gonna click on a thing called add existing because it's an add an existing tool. I'm going to add on feedback fruits. It will then give you an option of which tool you want to use. You have many available, but we are looking at group member evaluation. So I click on group member evaluation and it will come up and say, go full screen. Yes, I'll go full screen because that means that, boop, all big. And we're going to call this one, uh, uh, practice group member evaluation 24th, oh wait, uh, 24th de enero. 
2023. You see that? Uh, still got it. And so setting it up, it's fairly simple. If you if this were your real class, all of the groups would have synced from Brightspace and including all of the, 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 the division of groups as well. So if I click on here, instructions, um, provide feedback on each other's skills. I'm going to then click on student collaboration, work individually, review individually. How do you want to do it? I oh, want students are going to work as a group, but they're going to review each other individually to the groups. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I've got no groups in here because it's just a practice example. But then you would select, you know, the groups that you would want. So once you've done that, you click on next. Giving reviews. Now here, I'm going to configure. You'll see here that either use rubrics from my library at the minute, because this is my setup example. I've only got the one example so far, the Jam 13th practice session. If I click on this, this is a rubric I made previously. I can view it. At a minute, it's got one section in and I'm going to copy and edit it. So now I've got overall feedback, edit section. It lets, this lets you uh, reuse rubrics again and again and again, as many times as you need. You can share it with your colleagues as well. So once I've made a rubric, I can just email the people who I want to share it with and they can immediately use it as well. So the idea is to scale up as much as possible because we want to try and reduce teachers' workload. We know how valuable it is. I used to be a teacher, in fact, myself, not at university. I taught at a secondary school and yeah, setting up lessons was yeah a big part of my life. Marking was a big part of my life. And there was lots of times when I felt I didn't have much, as much time as I needed. And I'm sure you are in the same boat as well. So that's why I like working at this job because I try to save teachers time as well. I'm going to add sections. This one has, a, you know, I want to add a rubric. And here you can see that here's what I was talking about earlier on. I only want three sections. So I'm going to delete that level and delete that level. And the criterion are uh, teamwork. And if you've got, uh, you can just copy and paste your own rubrics into this. So whatever that would be. Um, I don't want to, you know, hopefully you should know how this works. If not, that's what I'm here. To, I'm here to help you with that. So teamwork, uh, we'll call this one detail. Da, da, da. You can put descriptions if you want. I only want two comments. Done. And now I've got a feedback criterion, two sections, two rubric criterion, one comment criterion. Uh, number of, required number of groups to review or one. Students do a self-assessment. And I will let you play around with that yourself. We've covered the main section, which is how, just to go into there, click on add existing feedback fruits, group member evaluations, and then you'll see all this stuff like the outlier detection, anonymity, visibility, but I don't need to go through every single thing. The only thing I would say is with the grading, that's configurable. This is, shows you all the activities they complete within it and the, the weighting of points within it. So completed giving feedback. If I say, right, as a teacher, this is the most important thing, I'm gonna say they get 60 points for that one. If you click outside of the box, just anywhere else here, it'll make it add up to what it is. This has to be 100 by the end. Uh, has written the minimum number of required reviews. Well, I need them to write stuff, so I'm going to make that 30. Uh, rating receipt on work in total, well, I'll say that's five, and then five. And whoop to do that comes to 100 in total. Done. Happy. If you think it's not important, just turn it off. And then make, make it add up to 100. Done. All right. I am going to stop sharing a second. That is a so with whistle stop tour of how to set up a group member evaluation and pausing for questions. I can see uh, Louise hand question there. Yeah, um, I don't know, Chris, is, if this is a question for you or for Mario. So, um, so I just saw that there. I mean, I know this this um, this talk is on group in teamwork, right? However, I just yeah. saw as we were um, going through the through the tool that there's also the option to to assess individual work. So I, I can see that this tool goes beyond uh, just teamwork. So I'm just wondering, Mario, if we're gonna continue working as we used to work on Brightspace that we uploaded the rubrics, or if we're gonna migrate 
to this tool so we make things easier in, a, in the same place for lecturers? Well, uh, my recommendation will be that we create the rubrics on the tool, on, G, on the group member evaluation tool. So we can share with each other in, in, the, in the group of teachers and we can evaluate within the tool because it's important to have this rubric within the group member evaluation in order to assess uh, self-assessment and assess the, the, the other uh, members of the group. So it's necessary to have this rubric on the group member evaluation. It doesn't yeah, but no. have any, uh -huh. okay, okay, go ahead. Sorry, no, perhaps I was not clear. No, I, I, I'm clear that we need to, um, mm -hmm. uh, we need to upload the, the rubrics specifically for, for teamwork in this tool, but I'm wondering if for other courses, other learning objectives that we do have defined at the school, but not in, as part of teamwork, let's say right. reading yeah. and communication skills, whatever it is, because it just called my attention when Chris was going through the tool that there is the option to assess individual work as well. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, the, the thing is that Feedback Fruits is a whole ecosystem that have like 15 tools, right, Chris? Uh, That's right, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can talk about the other 14 tools, like a yeah. summary of the other ones. Yeah. Sure, if, if I, I can mention those for a short mm -hmm. section, and I will actually go share my screen again, because I, I did very briefly allude to it in my slide, uh, I'm going to bring it up again now. Share screen. Boom. Can you see the our pedagogical tool suite? Yeah. Can yeah. you see my screen with the iPad? Yeah. So this is the overview of the whole tool suite. And so with Mario, we've decided to take it bit by bit because if I tried all 15 at once, it would be too much. So we today it was about group member evaluation. But you're right, you mentioned about individual work. So if a student wants to uh, you know, hand in a piece of work and get feedback from the teacher based upon rubrics, that would come under an assignment review task. Uh, if they want to do the same, hand in a piece of work, but then get he, uh, feedback from their peers, you'd call that one a peer review. And so the peer review and the assignment review is based upon work. Group member evaluation and skill review is based upon their soft skills. The skill review would also be done by the teacher. So uh, then there, that's, does that answer your question about the handed in work? Luis, was that, well, is that what you were referring to a minute ago? Y yes, yes, thank you, Chris. Yeah, because yeah. we're aiming sure. at the school to standardize. We do have rubrics that our lecturers follow, all of them, but what I really find mm -hmm. interesting of, 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 of your tool is that it's, it's kind of, it makes it easy to share uh, among lecturers and uh, maybe we can make the most of the yeah. tool. Yes, certainly. You can actually create uh, not just rubrics to share, you can create lessons to share as well, because there will be some rubrics which are standard across like everything across every class uh, and even if they are slight differences you can make a standard which can be edited so you can make a standard uh, group member evaluation or peer review or uh, one which i would like to mention is the automated feedback uh, the reason i like the automated feedback is because that is an ai teaching no, ai grading tool but it does it on the more surface level aspects of an essay so automated feedback can figure out length of the introduction it can make sure you're not con doing contractions they make sure it's in apa referencing style um talks in the active voice or the passive whichever one you need and the reason that's good is because teachers when teachers mark an essay they should be able to spend their time on the well, the qualitative aspects not the checking length of documents and making sure that the uh you know words aren't contracted like i've done this and so uh, I actually used it recently because I'm doing an MBA right now and I used this one when I gave him my first draft to my teacher and it came out with a, you know lots of mistakes uh, and then I went away, made it better, gave it to the teacher and I'm hoping I'll find out in about a month if I get a better grade. I'm hoping I do. Um, so I see a few chats coming through. Uh, 
if there is anything oh thank you if you've, you've got that the thing that Mario's just put the teacher info package I would like to refer your attention to that in the chat a second because it shows you all the tools in a bit more detail because I know that um, I could I could spend hours talking about them but I won't you know I'm not going to put you through that but please have a look at that thing he's just sent through um, and so far we've talked about feedback tools but there are three strands to the feedback fruits cool suite as a whole feedback activating study materials sort of a 30 second summary of this would be if you want your students to interact with documents or videos or audio files outside of class you upload a document to this tool to the interactive document tool it would be a word or pdf you can actually do questions on the text um, by highlighting sections and doing abcs so that they actually have to read the text in order to answer you get to see how much they've got their strengths their weaknesses and you can ensure that they're actually going to read it instead of saying here here's a paper read it for next time answer some questions there's no guarantee they will have read it but by doing questions throughout it means they they kind of have to same for the passive consumption of interactive video if you say to them watch this video for tomorrow do you know if they've done it or not not so easy to tell give them the video stop the questions throughout you're more likely to get a response from them and if they haven't done it you can ask them why same for the audio and there's some subtle differences between the comprehension and the interactive document but that'll be for another time when i'll go into more detail because i want to just give you an overview for today the interactive classroom this is to try to get people more involved with each other the interactive presentation you see it's it's i could have maybe done this if if you were my students in the class i could have done an interactive presentation for this screen share uh, and the way that works is you get you upload your powerpoint presentation and you can involve questions throughout and when the questions come up they get a bing on their screen they have to answer the question it gets it makes it more engaging and you get to see what your students understand well or not uh, discussion on work and topic you give them a prompt or ask them to upload a piece of work and they have a very good way of engaging with each other uh, you can ask them a certain amount of questions get them they need a certain amount of interactions to pass your class the discussion on topic is where you've set a topic um you know the american civil war uh was caused by slavery for example could be the discussion prompt and you say discuss and then they would go back and forth back and forth quiz tool is a quiz um very simply they they go through answer questions if they get it right great if they get it wrong try again so nothing particularly special with that one but team-based learning is it's one of my preferred to, out of all the lot my favorite ones are the automated feedback and team-based learning and the reason i like team-based learning is it's been around for about 50 years and the logic behind it is two minds are better than one so team-based learning you set up into groups of four people say each of you takes a quiz you don't get told your results for the quiz but you know you'll have day one you'll do the quiz da, 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 da. the next day you'll come together you will do the same quiz but as a group of four and you will then have to defend your idea if you think you are right and someone else comes up with a different answer this is good because it reinforces justification of your own so that you understand it better and then the person who's got the wrong answer at least you hope that you've got the right one they got the wrong one you can explain it to them so they understand the concept and the nice statistic with this one in 99.5 percent of the time the average group score is better than the average individual score which does go to show that two heads are, or four heads are better than one but it's, it's been it's only a recent tool because it's very hard to administer this at scale because if you've got 100 people in a room you've got to give out 100 quizzes take them back in score them next day give them out again uh, but then with this you just with a, a few clicks you can do it between 10 people or 100 people and it's no more work for the teacher so um, when Mario says it's a whole ecosystem yeah we do try to cover three very very big topics feedback activating study materials and the interactive classroom and for the context at the minute we are running a pilot session with Universidad del Norte to try and gauge the interest what tools you find useful and uh, mm, 
uh, yeah, I don't want to speak for you, for you Mario. I'm, I, we're starting off with a few key tools. Uh, group member evaluation was one. Mario, uh, what else have we got on our focus to start with? The other one was team-based learning. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it was peer review. I, I don't remember. <laughs> But I think yeah, there, it was, was, there was one team, more. Yeah, team based learning, uh, peer review, and group member evaluation. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, each of those, I could, eat, I could talk about each of them for about half an hour to an hour. We don't have time for that. And also, you know, one thing at a time. What I'd like to do, I'm actually going to stop sharing again. What I would like to ask is you've got these tools available. So please try setting it up. Uh, I assume your classes will be starting again soon. So uh, if you try it at least once and then you have a great experience, fantastic. If you don't have a great experience and then we find out that's, that's helpful for us as well. Because whilst you're having this trial period, the more data, the, the more people who use it and like it, then you get to keep using it. So please try it out with the class. And Mario here is your in-house expert. He's, he knows the tools well. So he can help you set up and of course I can help you set up if you would like a session with me. I am going to right now drop in my email into the chat because if you need anything I'm very I'm open for help. Um, right I know we've got a bit of a time difference so if you want some help please book it in your morning because my morning because right now it's coming up to six o'clock for me. So if you book it in your late afternoon, I will already be asleep, probably. Uh, and one other thing which I would like to show you, which I don't think I showed you yet, so <laughs> last, last point as far as demos go. Uh, I'm, here, I'm here in my activity again, and I've, you know, I've come up with a problem. I don't know how the, I don't know, how this one works. So what you can do, down the bottom left, you will have maybe noticed this. This blue button is our support chat, our support help desk. You can start a conversation and you will usually get a response within a minute. Currently, we've got ah, three of my colleagues. Ah, they're, they're on it right now. So if I click on send us a message, if I write, I don't want to bother them, but I will, I will say, hi there, I have a problem with my automatic outlier detection. And then they will immediately try and help you out and get your problem solved or you can check the help articles. So if the article is setting up a group member evaluation, that's what I want some help with, setting up group member evaluation. And then that'll take me to an article which will help me understand, here's a video, how to set it up. So yeah, we do provide as much help as we can to help you get set up. All right, that, is the overview of the group member evaluation. We will, be show, we will be going through another tool, I'm hoping soon in another workshop. We need to work out a date, Mario, but we certainly will be like to help you out with that. And then I'm gonna ask again, has anybody got any questions that they want to know about setting it up? And if not, is there anything, any, any, any comments anyone's got? Uh, is anybody already thinking I would like to try it out? Give me a, yeah, sure. Uh, Why not? Yeah. Bien. Gracias, Arturo. So, yeah, just give it a go and see what you think. Uh, and with that, I don't think I've got anything else uh, I'd need to add. So, Mario, if you'd like to close off, I'll be happy to pass to you. Okay, Chris, thank you very much for this time, for sharing with us this information. I know uh, a lot of teachers are going to ask about feedback fruits from now. <laughs> so, yeah. Muchas gracias a todos profesores por estar aquí, por compartir, por sus preguntas. Ya saben que estoy disponible para cualquier consulta relacionada con esta herramienta y para seguir en el piloto durante este primer semestre. Thank you, Chris. I will, I'll be sharing you. with you the, the recording of the session too. Thank you. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again. You Adios, uh, Professor. See you. Okay. Gracias. Thank you.